for Bouncer for a loot disillusionment over in that chaos line. Well, we're starting here. Game number one for our grand finals between TCG and Orange Logo. It's going to be very interesting to see how this build is going to play out for Hellseth, because normally we're expecting him to be very aggressive, but this is quite the defensive and st stability-based build. So it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to play out already over towards the keep here. Yeah, I'm just going to literally stick on him for a yeah. minute. because uh, see what happens. <laughs> I think we'll want to see this, but he does get caught up in that more early on with the traps, but puts down the wells on node, and that does give him a lot of survival. But look at the quickness Stability, regeneration, protection, everything that comes out from that, even resistance as well, we do see popped around this point. And he's very tanky, and we do see a potential knockback coming out from the red, but Frey in the end, oh no, he brings it back up to like half HP here. And look at the cooldowns, the alacrity. Now, if you don't know what alacrity is, it decreases your cooldown time. And that's really helped their team to survive and even push Orange Logo off the point. Well, yeah, they really haven't been able to do anything over there at all. Very, very difficult for them to continue mm. to sustain on there. Uh, Seltaf is still pushing on against this. Pops himself the well of action this time uh, to try and continue on. Dragon's Maw has been used against them, but Hellseth getting very, very aggressive oh, on into that position there. Going on towards 50 Cent and Denshi, he's going to end up falling. And that is a great little pickup for them to start things off. Yes, yeah, so we haven't seen a Necro today, and you still still feel that maybe, you know, is Necro going to be a place in... Is it going to be a place for the Necro near you? It definitely is on an A at the moment, but we're not seeing it being played so much. I was going to say, I like your wording there, in EU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because NA is a completely different story. Uh, I try not to predict exactly what's going on. Oh my god, that pull in on towards Frostball as well there. Going to be able to pick him up. That was a great little move overall. I think he popped Gravity, Gravity well like, to pick him up. Yeah, it was indeed. You're completely correct about that one. And now we're seeing that indeed Orange Logo trying to pick up the side points. But the thing is, TCG being involved so hard in that fight over on the midpoint, they didn't get any caps. They should pick up the two side nodes now as well as Ludasaurus stands above Sindrine claiming his place as the cap point that? holder there Red over on that one. Yeah, and eventually, you know, as much as they were focusing on the fights to begin things off here at Work TCG, it paid off in spades. Getting themselves mm. two caps now a credit to one without them being able to really put on too much pressure. I mean, yes, we're seeing uh, 50 Cent as well as Rom moving over towards the midpoint keep here, but this should be still kept uh, strong and held here by Elseth, who's rotated around all the Drazir, not having the easiest time. He's trying to get supported here, actually, and Hells of Imagine does it in the end, but I mean, mainly it was due to that, also that stealth gyro which came out from uh, from him there as well. We need to be careful on the point for the guys. We do see the nice knockback as well coming out from Syngineer, which really pushes Drazi away from any potential res. Good use of that. We saw Kazir do something similar back over on the Kylo as well towards the end of that game in that series. And Kazir could potentially get burst down, 20% proc comes out as well. And no, it was the actual shield fire first um, with the hibernation coming out so from Karzis. But does he get fully healed there? So much healing. So much healing comes out to him. 50 cent goes and down as well. Sindri is almost going to get cleaved. Oh, dearie me. Very, very close to actually going down himself the there. Though, that heal because he got healed up so hard. That was through the cleave damage. That was from the damage as well. Look I'm wondering if that was also from Lord Asura. Yeah, that combination of Asura and also even the heal. Just completely turned around that fight. Look how many boons they had during all of that. It was like 25 stacks of might on each of them yep. while that fight was going down. Huge, <coughs> huge potential coming out from the uh, composition that we're seeing here from TCG. They've got the point lead. They've got the advantage. And this build is very interesting from Hellseth. Yeah, I mean, with the combination with Asura as well, Lord Asura there, yeah. the, amount of might, uh, the amount of boon stacking they can do. He's ridiculous, but you know, it proved. But the thing yeah. is, here they're not able to rotate around the map quickly. Mm. So actually, what what's happening here? They they're losing mobility for sustainability, really, in fights. So they're I looking at really working between two points rather than playing the whole free cut at the moment, because yeah. they haven't really moved over to Henry. Yeah, it looks incredibly impressive when they're all together, and that's kind of what they're doing for the most part here. They this are sticking together. This isn't their play. This isn't their kind of gameplay, and this mm. might this could be something which. Maybe they've maybe they've been able to get used to it, but I can't imagine the health has been playing. He's told me, you know, three or four days maybe max they've been using this. So I'm not, you know, at the moment it's not working too badly for them. But Orange Logo could pick up this mid node now actually. Yeah, they could. Uh, everyone is rotating on around there. It's going to be a big, big fight here on keep if they're not careful. As Asura is down, trying to pick him up though. Very, very close to getting picked up by Kazas. They need more support here to help that out. Vapor forms away, getting himself some a uh, bit more support, and he will be able to get up there. So very, very good pickup as the huge, huge fight's going to go down.
Yeah, exactly. Because it's just on the side there. It's a little bit stuck. Rom tries to pop those Cs down with a glyph. We're going to see Hunter's Ward as well coming out from Tage there. He was able to lock down a lot of the targets. He's still I'm waiting to pull in his target as well too. The midpoint popped down his traps as well. Oh, and now we're seeing Frostball doing a good job actually. They're using these traps well, the teams today. They're using them as good, good, good distance. They put some distance between each other. Insta pickup though, insta pickup. The cleave here is wow. very, very important. Asura is going quite low, so is Lord Hellseth. Kazus is also quite uh, far down. But at the same time, massive damage goes down onto Will and Rom, as I well as Tage as well. Big, big cleave. Sindranir might end up falling. Oh, Rom manages to get away briefly during all of this. Sindranir goes away, and now Rom is scrambling they for his life, but he falls too. Brilliant pickups here from uh, TCG. And Orange Logo are playing into the, the the play that TCG want them to totally, do? Totally, one hundred percent. They yeah. are play. They yeah. want the big team fight. They want the five on yeah, five. I w I that's why I went out of the map. Like everyone might have been thinking, why is Jeffrey just going out into the map rather than keeping exactly yeah. the fight? Because we had we had the first week, like month or so there of Guild Wars PVP going on at mid. Get the cap points on the sides and go to mid. <laughs> Let's go. That was, all it, that was what it was about. You know, yeah. that's what happened for a long time. Wow. And now you know. That's <laughs> And I'm really surprised that Orange Logo fell for that. They, they have got us. You've, you're totally right. They have got to spread themselves out a little thinner Free here caps. and try and keep themselves in those they're kind of positions. Oh, are they? They're yeah. doing exactly the same thing again. They're getting pigeonholed into this henge node. Oh my! And this is this might not end up going too well for them. Although they're respawning, they've got all the cooldowns available. Where, where the thing is, is that it's going to be a four on five. Jazir is very, very far away from this location, but they could still sustain it technically. I mean, look, still look at the boons that they have on their yeah, side here. Yeah, Frostball. Oh, oh, Frey. Oh, 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 be careful. Likewise, Frostball on the other side as well. The focus fire is important here for them. Once one person goes down, it's all about that cleave. Will it be Frey going down? He's very, very close here. They really want to take I, him away. I feel like he's going to get rest. Oh, Look at the healing. The healing is immense. Look at the boons you can see on the left side oh as I'm my rolling gosh. my rounds around them. They've got almost permanent uptime of my permanent Pick, oh. uptime of regeneration. Here comes Drazir. Here comes Drazir as well. They're looking for the kill on Frostball. They realize it's going to be a five on five over at this location. Lord Asura also very, very low. This is chaos right now. Whoever, Absolute chaos. If, if Orange Logo lose this fight, they're going to... They, they, they know they just to don't. move out of this. They, it feels like they will, but oh. Lord Asura goes down here. We're going to see the res coming out from Hell7 and the rest of the team. He's very close. There's so many, but the cleave might be good for them Picks in the up. end, and that's going to really cost them. Oh my and Orange God. Logo is starting to bring this back in the point where I didn't think that was going to be possible, and that's a good job from the guys. We've got the res. Everyone's back up. Everyone's absolutely fine again, potentially, here, <sighs> as the boon starts to regenerate for the team, and this... Orange Logo need to move out into the map. Yes. They cannot stay here for this long, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, Rom is moving over towards Keep here. He's being followed by Drazia, though. He should be able to deny him for quite a little while, although uh, Rom wanted to get him there very quickly. He tries to go for the Vines uh, to slow him as opponent down, but Drazia gets on towards that point very, very fast. Now that the fight has been spread out a little bit, but at the same time, Frostball is under some pressure towards the Henge here by still this constant threat and presence. And without Rom there, they might have a little bit of problems. This is a strong composition still from TCG. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, Ron was helping a lot more in that fight than, than Drazit was for mm -hmm. over here on the midpoint. You know, he can sustain in the 1v1 for ages, and so can the Druid. He got the decap, which is very, very good. You, they, they don't want that yeah, to true, extend. True. But now 50% 50, 50 is actually having a lot of issues, and blue team members are gonna go actually down. starting to separate here as the Revenant Syndrome it starts to move towards mid. Ball. But that costs them the, maybe the potential kill as well. Oh. And the death, and they're going to they're gonna get decapped here if they're not careful. Tage has to distance himself off node as well. Yeah, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to kind of keep sustaining that. That's why we've been seeing even Kazas as well. Also chasing down on towards Rom himself and still Syndrome here, trying to battle away this against Denshi. This is Denshi. good. This is really good, actually. Separate up. They've yeah, got yeah, to yeah. separate but up. Ron gets the decap at mid, and now he can. Now Kazes can. Uh, sorry, Syndrome can focus point. on this one v one, which is going to be difficult it, versus this engineer. Build. It might be too late, though. It might be ah, too but late. Ron went down there's, in the end. There's only five minutes left here, uh, Dan. There's only five minutes left. It might be too late for them in this particular game. Yeah. They might have to reevaluate their tactics in the next map because if they continue to do this, I think TCG is just going to be able to steamroll. TCG are w winning with a bunker support as well. It's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a glorious. I think I need moment. to rethink my life. <laughs> What's happening? What's going on? <laughs> what is happening? This, this heart of Warns complete change up has potentially brought in a very strong build.
for not only TCG, but potentially maybe even for the meta in Guild Wars 2. I mean, you're so right, though, about the alacrity. I mean, looking at it, how it plays out, look at how much they're able to refresh and constantly do big, big damage in these fights. Yeah, also, the sustain, GG. everything. And yeah, the GG comes out. And TCG here in game number one Whew. with the bunker mesmer. Didn't even <laughs> mention the fact that Freylina, who was on the orange logo for two World Tournament Series, yes. just beat his old team, which Oof. is going to be an awesome little storyline to watch grow and evolve through Pro League, you know? That was That's amazing. That was quite the start. That was quite the start. Uh... I want to I want to give props just a moment. We've seen it in okay, so we've seen it in one game. Yep. So we can't judge too much on it. No, no, you no, need no. a bigger sample size yes. than that to really so judge on what is going on agreed. here from Helseth's build. But usually you that see him in a more aggressive stance. Yeah. This game, it was kind of an aggressive stance, but it was just forcing the fact that it was always going to be this weird 5v5. They wouldn't give up on it. Yeah. They would not give up on it. I loved it. Orange logo <laughs> has to adapt. Yeah, they, they have just to needed to move. They stuck at mid for so long. Yes. And they went back into the same situation. They just repeated the same mistake. And yeah, they started to move out and they got the decap. That was great. And what their thoughts were, you know, put Sindranir in the 1v1. Ron moves to far potentially to get the decap there as well. Mm -hmm. And then spread it that way. But it was way too late in the day, unfortunately. They got, it was almost like the two maps we saw earlier with, um, TCG and Rank 55, where they got put in a place where they lost the game. They got involved too so much in the team fight yep. that the game just ran away from them. And that's almost you know Guild Wars two two years ago or so, actually. That was uh, that was scary. That was very very scary. There. It's kind of interesting though, isn't it? Yes. Just to see a completely different build. Like Hell's has been playing Shatter Mesmer for ever. <laughs> A long time. <laughs> and then there was that one time he tried to build and it didn't work and he went back to Shadow Mesmer. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then I think then that was last monthly. Yeah, yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. And then he played like Lord Nexef as well and uh, different things like things which we might not talk about. Yeah. But there could be potential for this. But you're right, you know, there's more. We need to gather more evidence to see whether or not this is going to work. Could this second game on Foe Fire be that evidence of Ooh. potentially like you know, people need to think a bit differently maybe with these builds. And there's more potential out there that we haven't maybe found everything that's available. And there's even more potential in this next game. We're seeing Tage has moved over to a Revenant. Oh, so we have tiger. a double Revenant here on the side of Orange Logo. Now that is a strong one. Eek. He's going for Corruption. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, he's going for a Condi what? build. Oh my God. He's going for a Condi build, boys. Well, this is going to be one of the first times we've seen this in a cast. Going back to the roots of his guardian, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gone for the uh, legendary demon stance, which is the Condi dealer here. But he's still sticking with that sword shield at present. But likely his other weapon set, which is exactly what would, which is the obvious choice, is the mace and also the offhand axe here. Now he can put down a lot of burning. He can also do some nice torment here as well. As also he can put, he can line up his foes in one straight line or in an area where he can put a lot of cleave and condition damage into an area. And even he's actually even gone for the Viper's Rune here, which is actually something that has been discussed as a possible meta for the PvE area of the game. Ah. And this is this is gonna be very, very interesting because we've I've not casted a Viper's Amulet Revenant or a Condi Revenant. Yet. I mean, how many revenants have you cast? <laughs> That's a good curious. point. <laughs> Actually, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. <laughs> I'm okay. trying to put in so many hours <laughs> casting and learning yeah. everything about the rev. You know, when we've been so focused on the Marauder build, we've been forgetting about the condition potential that could come out from this build because he's got so much survivability. Why not chuck in the conditions? You know. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing, is, the thing that's quite good is they haven't got they haven't got a druid over on that team with the uh, with the glyphs to remove a lot of conditions as well. So there is still condition removal in the team, 100%. Mm. But could this work out for them quite well? I think he really could. It's in his Tage, you know, as well. Noticing Helseth's build, he has gone back to the usual at the moment. Maybe so on this map they feel that you know Portal Lord Rush is really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, this, this this could be the main reason because yeah. that's going to be very strong. He's going to be very susceptible to conditions actually. Um, but I think you know he's going to come. He, he's going to get different people coming to his aid. 
uh, mainly the elements in this, of course. Yeah, I think it's a good point, though, to bring up. Uh, like, as much as the previous game's build, yeah, very, very powerful, considering the setup, I think even, even Halseth can appreciate the fact that not only Portal Play is really good on this map, but mm. also the fact that Orange Logo's not stupid. They're not gonna, <laughs> like, I if he were to run the same kind of build on this map just out of uh, stubbornness or something mm. like that, they would adapt. They yeah. would try a, a little bit more of a spread rather than a proper 5v5 focused fight. This is a lovely build as well. Mm -hmm. Makes complete sense. Resistance is obviously really, really good as well as having that banish enchantment as well. Oh, we still are we over on Tage now? I'm just I'm sorry, I was going back. No, that's like fine, that's I'm, fine. I'm just fascinated by the the new builds. Not necessarily the new builds. People are playing different variations yes. of everything, but he's just going with the extra condition damage there as well as the torment I was talking about earlier that he's inflicted for his weapon sets there as well. <coughs> Pardon me. And you got the you kind of boon ripping from that opportune extraction as well as obviously going over to Rampant Vex. So more torment from him. Mm -hmm. Good job. Should be pretty nice. Well, we are ready to this. go at the moment. Uh. I wonder if he's going to be able to Condi burst to a degree in different d different situations because I know that that mace-axe combination is really nice. You can, you can, you've got a blast as well there. So... Have to wait and see. Well, in the end, I mean, they've they've chosen this composition to try and keep them alive in this mm. tournament, which means a lot. You know, it, it means that basically they have good faith in this composition yeah. uh, over maybe what they would have had in our previous game, of course. Which is a very interesting choice to see. Uh, double rev, double rev. Uh, we were oh, we were talking about double rev a bit before the broadcast, <laughs> uh, and how it potentially could have a lot of power, but not in the same kind of vein that we're looking at yeah. it here. We weren't really expecting as much of this. They know what they're running because we've we've now got Kaze's running Lissa rune, and ah. when you use an elite skill, you convert up to five conditions into boons, and he's got legend swap. You know, he's not got really he's not really got cooldowns on these elites. It's yes. all energy management, right? Yes. So it's so he's got he has got a bit of a cooldown, but it's not massive. And he's got two elites he can switch to. So he's got a lot more condition removal from Ruin the Blisser. And Makes he sense. knows he must know that, that you know, we've already got the Necro and now we've got a Condi coming out from Tage as well. So that rune, really good for for Karzez to pick up. Good job. Um, good idea, good spot from him. Just wondering what else we're going to see from the other players here. Engie's going to have a few issues with this, even though you've got adaptive armor. Comedy reduction of 20% is awesome with the toughness, but still, if you've got con <laughs> permanent conditions on you, and you haven't got much comedy clear yourself, you're going to be relying a lot on your teammates for that clearance, and it's going to be mainly from the Ellie. All right, well, we are good to go. Game number two about to start here between TCG and Orange Logo. As at the moment, we have TCG currently one game up after that fantastic little play from them with the composition they had. Now we're back Hold over to normal point. Lord Helseth with his <laughs> usual play. Normal Lord Helseth. If was you can call him normal. Was there ever one? <laughs> 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 one of our, well definitely one of our prized possessions in Guild Wars 2 SPVP is for sure. As we go over towards the midpoint now as well, having a look at Helsef and also on Karzez as they trip into the midpoint. Early Moa actually comes out onto 50% uh, as well as he drops to almost 50% HP. Oh, does get a little bit of healing here as well as Frostball is just trying to surround him and try and give him as much he burst healing as physically possible. He will pop his, his heal as well. 50% did get away to a degree, but Frostball is not in the region to really help him out here significantly. Still the pain on towards him is going to get brought down there into the downstate. Sintronia. Oh, uh, oh no, actually, no, Sintronia is not with him at all there. Uh, more onto Frostball pick as up, well. Pick up. Oh, they get the pick up. Yeah, the more onto Frostball didn't really do too much, though. I mean, it kept him out of that situation, but I mean, they got 50% up anyway. That was good. That was good from Orange Loki there. I was very surprised to, to see that res come out in the end. Uh, Sintronia is having a bit of a hard time over towards Waterfall. Not so easy against Frey at all. It's funny to see Sintronia against Frey, actually. Uh yeah, it <laughs> is. It really is. It's, it's you know, they, that's that whole thing that we were talking about before. You know, Frey coming up against his old teammates, yeah. which is what you're referencing. And and that's that's kind of important to, to think about in the future as well. I see Rom actually being able to take down over towards this position. So the gr uh, quarry has been taken by them. Um, war yeah. Waterfall also Whoa. taken. Because this just comes out with the Dragon Elite. Just knocks Rom right on his backside there. 
That was that was immense as you walk into the point. <laughs> you just see this massive dragon, like waving his wings at you, just knocking you right back. 50% in Reaper's Shroud here, just trying to keep himself alive against Kazir's, uh, just using as much health pool as possible against all of this. Uh, but is it difficult? I'm trying to get towards Lord of Suri here, and he's able to get away for a moment, but very, very close to going down. Frostball gets on the chase. Will throw him into the down state, and Tage is going to finish it off We're after yep. the Vapor Bomb. <laughs> Rip. Oh, no, potentially. <laughs> oh, no, we might see a res potential. No, there we go. Elsif's a little bit. Not able to get in there in time, unfortunately, since mid stop pretty they're much. They're having a hard time in this game. Kazus is going they down, are. Frey is down they as are. well. And this is going to be another one as uh, Sinjani gets knocked back there for a moment, but Kazus will go down. Look at this. Oh, Tate, the is able to, Tate is able to really pl place people where he needs them to be. Like using that axe is really, really nice actually. And this is working a lot better for Orange Lugger. As soon as they move into the rest of the map, look, people are going for decaps now. They're going for repositioning. They're putting, now they're trying to control the game the way they play yes. it and the way they want to play it rather than, you know, TCG dictating their positioning. Unfortunately, they might lose out here. All they need to make sure they get this, get on Frey. We do see Syndrome obviously re engaging on him there as well. So bring us out the focus, trying to block some of that damage and the trap to keep Syndrone in pinned down in that area there. Obviously, doesn't want to try and cross that because he's going to get mm. crippled and a little bit of damage coming out as well. Awesome. Oh, whoa, the more comes out. He puts Syndrone in a place. Yeah. A lot of pressure going down on towards him there. Uh, he should be fine, though, in the end. Uh, we'll be able to get away. I've got to ask you uh, a question mm. whilst this is going on. What is the Revenant symbol? <coughs> what is it? I don't know. Is it, <laughs> is, it, is it a little crossbow? I don't know. I don't know it looks it cool, though. Yeah. It's I like cool. it. Yeah. It's definitely the, the Revenant symbol. That's yeah. for sure. I'm not sure. Maybe law heads in chat can really bring you something in, in, that, in that. I would appreciate that. Tweet me, guys, at I, Kyle Aris. I, I would do like PBE, to know. I do but I, I don't know if that's if it's just a symbol or there's an exact reason for that. I'm sure oh. we have someone like Wooden Potatoes or maybe Inks or someone in chat that could probably sort that out. That would be very useful. Thank you very much. <laughs> but anyway, back into this game, back into serious mode. Uh, we, what do we have going on? 50 Cent is uh, trying to get away towards Graveyard here. He was being pursued by Drazir. Uh, should be fine for a moment. He needs a little bit of support. He's going to go into the Death Shroud there, though. Uh, Reaper Shroud, even, I should say, uh, to try and keep himself alive against Drazir. Yeah, Halsef downstairs as well on the stairs. It's still... Ouch. This this game is very slow at the moment, you know. It's still, it still feels very, very slow, actually. Even though we're seeing a lot of kills coming out across the map, the fights are still going on between the three nodes. We've got we've got contention on the sides. We've still have the bomb cap coming out from Orange Logo. They've still got the point in in their favour as well. We've no real contention, so everything's moved to sides. And I hate to say it, but I feel like you know that comp that we saw from TCG was working a lot better. But you know, Orange Logo have compensated mm. by changing their comp as well. I think it's very interesting, uh, the Revenant, and how quickly you can get Searing Physio back into the play, back into play. Because mm -hmm. in the end, it's it's a spell, an ability that can zone out quite well. Yeah. Start, you say you are not standing here for a good portion of time. <laughs> so it's very very cool to see that like being such a low cooldown and having that space control. And at the same time, Freylina like is actually like taking quite a bit of damage. Himself there with the pursuit on forwards gets out of that trap though. Very very important to make sure it doesn't get locked down. Well, the axe allows allows Tage to really gap close a lot more as well. Like you can see, the fifth skill it just pulls out. It, it can try and control, and then he can actually just nip through. It's like a port mm. that fourth skill on the axe. Really loving that. Um, the combinations that are possible with the revenant. Yeah. I was saying gets out of that trap. It was his trap. My apologies. I, mean, <laughs> I always just keep thinking there's going to be a dragon hunter on either side at the Do moment. You get now. Oh, wow, yeah. They're doing really, really well here, Orange Logo, considering. It's going to be two board. against one, and they've got the quarry locked down for sure with Rom now dead. Yeah, plus one there by Kazes. He can move now back over towards Targe, uh, Tai... Target, I was going to say, which is probably what his name is, but we're going <laughs> to keep calling him Tage because he's Tage. 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 Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what else they've called him. Um, and now we are going to see Syndrome here. Just, they're just trying to reposition here. Moving back possibly, but Syndrome just watching out for their back point. They just want to make sure that they're going to continue this lead and keep going into the game. So they can potentially just hold it where they want to right now. I mean, we are going to see potentially some damage coming out to Kazes. It's still slow at mid. Really slow at mid for TCG. Yeah, it's difficult to wrestle the graveyard away from anybody considering, I mean, even uh, even in the current meta, yeah, there's some bursts and yeah, there's the traps and whatever, but unless you've got proper, proper full focus on towards someone, it is going to be difficult.
We've got Portal here for Hellsef as well. He does come out. He's at the moment, we do see Kazes here as well. So we're trying to see that plus one, and they should be able to get the kill on Syndroneer here. But Decap comes out from Rom, and he's moving to Lord. Frostball, 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 Frostball. Tries to get away here as there's a lot of pursuing him at the moment. Rom's going 1v1 versus the Lord. What? I'm a beast. Where is he? I know you're running the beast mastery is line, but Jesus, really? Is this actually going to... Well, he, he's going to kill he's it. He's got him down to half HP. He's got 10 might stack my... They don't even know he's there. No, he gets the interrupt off, look. He's uh, gonna, is he going to kill this? Uh, yes. Oh, my God. He's got enough interrupts for uh, that to happen. Uh, he can heal himself up. He can sustain. Uh, now the Lord might get a little bit of HP back. But no, he actually dazes. Oh, and my God. He's going to get the Lord kill. Oh They're going to be at 482 <laughs> points. Rom goes for a single Lord rush, and the GG comes out from oh. Hellsef as 1-1. Oh, what? That is amazing. What? Well, you know, when you're in the lead, you're in the lead. <laughs> Nah, he's not going to kill the Lord with a Druid. Guys. Oh, my. Druid, we know how much Druid can survive. Yeah, they, they do pretty well for themselves. The, the, the thing that... <laughs> the thing that... <laughs> the, the thing that Slowly is most <laughs> impressive to me is just the fact that he sneaks away from all the chaos that's going on, and then they are completely unaware. Which is what they didn't do in the first game too much. Well, and then they yeah, do this they game. yeah, they definitely <laughs> didn't sneak away in that first game. Uh, but that was that was just a great move to even up things. I, not even necessary, to be honest, considering the position that they, they were in. They knew where it was. They, they definitely knew where it was. There was nothing that, like, it uh, feels like they let them... Nah, they didn't let them have it in the end. But no one moved back. There was no real movement to defend that. Oh, I do wonder me. what the reaction is in the crowd right now. But yeah, I was I was checking actually. I was looking at what was going on in Twitch <laughs> chat, and they were having a fun time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's back in the, it's back in the past. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. that is game number two <laughs> done. Uh, <laughs> these these games have been so different today. We've had yeah, we've had a mix of everything. We've had uh, you know, high climatic kind of endings based off a boss kill, you know, on Forest between rank 55 and TCG, for example. Yeah. We've had slower paced games in the first series as well with big team fights and uh, more skirmishes on the side points as well. And then mm -hmm. we've got a single boss kill between TCG and Orange Logo in a point where the no I one mean, even went for defense there. I mean, now that there's raids in Guild Wars 2, surely Rom can just kind of go and do those on his own as well. Well, it, 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 they'll <laughs> they're soon raids in Soon raids, of course. But he will yeah. be able to. He will be able to. Just take a little Solo. while. Solo. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got boss timers, I do believe. Yeah. We've got at least one. Yeah. I don't know the other ones yeah. yet. But you're right, you know, treat like Guild Wars 2, we, we don't have a lot of timers on bosses. Yeah. Might get. Well, that was interesting. That was interesting, to say the least. <laughs> that's uh, one way to describe it. I'm still actually. I need to. Oh, that's what I need to do. I need to check my Twitter to see if anybody tweeted me regarding that symbol. Basically, mm. resembles a third eye for reverence ability to use powers from historic legend beings in the mists. Thank you very much for your information, Who Adrian Lloyd. All oh, right. Okay. Good stuff. Thank you very much. You even got a shout out on stream. You did. There you go. That's you what did. happens when you tweet me. That was brilliant, actually. Yeah, now, I, now we know. Now we know. That was. That was. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. So we are waiting for these guys to come back into the game. And uh, I'm looking at it closer. <laughs> <laughs> They're right. really, really good, Scovo, to answer your question. Re really good. You what, mate? What's going on? Nothing. Something happened. I'll tell you later. All right. Okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, we are waiting for these guys to come back into the game. Obviously, this is for the 1K now. Um, difference is 700 euros. So they are obviously making some... Maybe some comp changes here. Yes. Wondering what we're going to see from the man himself, Mr. Hellsef, and also the man himself, Mr. Rom. That was a nice little getaway there to grab that Lord Rush. The Lord Rush. <laughs> the, the, the Lord Rush, was The it? Lord Rush. It was more of a, like... Wait, haven't we seen in the past people going to Lord straight away? So that is technically a Lord Rush. But yeah. then the Lord Solo is something that we don't see too often. It's more of a relaxed movement. I guess so, yeah. You could you could say do that. Do. So you could say kill that. the lords, you know. That's what Rom did. It's He's good at it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> he, could do, he, could, he pulled it up. Yeah, yeah, he, he did. He, you know, I'm, I'm still a bit baffled. I mean, there was, some, there was rumblings about connections and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. I just feel like that, no, they just didn't, they just didn't move back. I mean, 
it was just a really, really odd game. It was a little weird. It yeah. was a little weird. Is Helseth... Hmm, that's a good question. Is Helseth running his pre... Where is he? He's not even here. Helseth, where are you? Okay, so he's not here right now. Uh, I was wondering if he'd maybe changed back, but maybe they kind of... But the thing is, Portal Play is very powerful here on Battle of Kylo as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So probably would go with the Portal. Uh, kinda, would have uh, like expected them to. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, they, his they were usual too good. build. They were too good in that last game. But the thing is, if they draw them into that mid-fight again, then... You know, they, there's potential for them to control that midpoint quite well because it's a small area, you know, they can push them back into the side points. You've got some stability that comes out from Hellsif as well through one of his wells. And there's a potentially potentiality for them to actually sustain quite well on that node and actually, you know, hold that back point. Because he's got that build, there's no reason why he can't just put the portal into it. True, true. I mean, he could just do that. Which Doesn't well would you sacrifice if you were going to do that? Not the stability, but he's going for it. Look. He's going for it. He's going for it, boys. Let's Not jump into the game, actually, and have a little bit of a quick look at what is going on. We've got our wells. So which would you do if you wanted to go for <laughs> Portal? If you really wanted to go for it? I mean, potentially... I would say potentially well of recall, maybe. The thing is, there's the alacrity across all of them. Uh. is so powerful. Like... Having that available is really, really strong, but so sacrificing one is difficult, right? Well, of recall, I mean, it's you know, it reduces re um, yeah, speeding <laughs> skill <laughs> recharge. Yeah, I don't know because they've already <laughs> got so much alacrity anyway, so why not just get rid of well of recall? You know, chill is, is important, yeah. and because it essentially slows their cooldowns, um, sorry, their skill recharge as well, and their movement, so speed, it works though. well. Chill, chill is good, it's not. A massive amount, but I feel like seconds. maybe he could do that. I don't. He's not gonna. He's just not gonna do that. No. He's, there's no it, it's nice to kind of like theorize, talk about it, discuss these kinds yeah. of things. If you but wanted to have been that an option, it could have been. It could have been. Definitely. Right. Let's get into it then. Game number three here for our Go for Guild Wars 2 monthly final. We are 1 1 here between TCG and Orange Logo. And what a pleasure it is to bring you this tournament so far in Heart of Thorns. Yep, indeed. As we go into the map of the final game of this cup today sad times but pro league soon and we on will the move. watch one of these teams oh stealth movement comes up for ccgs and move into mid Hulsif does face retreat off node but he's going to put down a few of those wells to make sure they're going to be a look at the boons coming out oh from well. Hulsif perfect exactly what i said before the game you know this is a good place where they can solidify their claim and really tank on node they've yeah. got stability Hellsef can defend a lot. He can offer up a lot of boons, resistance, stability, regeneration, protection, everything to his allies there. And the thing is, once they've claimed Clock Tower, or if they end up do claiming Clock Tower, they've got a great launch pad to actually throw themselves towards one of the other spots. You wouldn't need to. Yeah. You do not need to get greedy here. Hellsef will under a lot of pressure here, though, from 50 Cent, and that is going to be Denshi bringing down Hellsef very, very fast there. Only a little bit of help coming now along, but it doesn't look like it's going to be there at all. Hellsef is abandoned. Yeah, he has been completely, and unfortunately, not the conditions in the end aren't, aren't going to help him at all. And Kazis is going to stay on point over towards mid and Sintrania. defend versus Frostborn. Does Sintrania have any more healing left available to him? No, he does not. The facet of light was gone. So was Enchanted Bl uh, Daggers. And that is going to be now Freelina trying oh. to get the full kill. Tage trying to pick him up. It's not going to be enough, though. They will bring down Sintrania. Good pickup. Good that he's not going for the damage there to try and make sure. Otherwise, it would have healed him up a lot quicker there as well. <laughs> And Tage does just pour onto Frey here as well. Trying to get that nice bit of burst damage off, but yeah. the block is going to negate a lot of that. Though. Noticeably, Lord of Sura went down uh, over another node as well, uh, but we kind of missed that for a moment, I think. Uh, but aside from that, Kazias here is under a lot of pressure towards the mid himself. Does he have healing? No, he doesn't. Trying to hold it contested for Oof. as long as the hospital stability comes in as well from Helsa, maybe. And the distortion the as well gets him up. Good job. Yeah, it's popped well of Black Frontier as well as Gravity Well. They're trying to go for some damage here. Kazus is still under a lot of pressure, though. What's he got left after he uses nothing. all his wells? He's got absolutely nothing left. But that is where Asura comes into the point, and he's able to take over while Helsef's cooldowns come back up. And the game is very even at the moment. The attempt from the knockback there at Kazus, but I think everybody dodged out of it and realizing that it was about to hit. So very, very important. It's almost akin to a trebuchet, considering the positioning that they're here in the clock <laughs> tower. You've got to react and dodge, and you should be okay. You have a little bit of wind-up time for to be able to get out of that. Drazir is taking a lot of damage, yeah, though, meanwhile. Yeah, Condi's 
This is big, big Condi damage on Sadrasi. He's in the 1v2 as well. He's not able to survive that. Like, he can't sustain that long, surely. Oh, but he's going to be able to until Karzes can come in. He's still low. He just need, they just need to keep going with the Condis. Can they pick him up? Can they pick him up there? I'm sure there's too much damage coming out on towards that position. And Karzes had a really, really hard time of being able to try and pick him up as well as keeping himself alive. You can really see the damage coming out from Tej there during all of that with the temporal rift, etc. moving on forwards with even the for the Fischer to be able to do extra damage. Yeah, and actually Karzes uses a lot of his disengage quite well there as well, removing those conditions while he tries to move back into the map as well. They should be able to pick up that mansion node. Frey will be picking up the windmill though, as we have seen Rom defeated there over the towards that node. But defeated. now, Orange, yeah, defeated. Wolfie Perfect. Frost Ball is going to be able to just Red tank on point here with Sindrina, who's going to be more offensive now. But as he moves potentially over for the decap on Wimmer. Now, this is more the action from Orange Logo that Oof. we would prefer to see. Almost bye bye to Frostball there. Manages to get himself out of there at the very last second when he was being pummeled into oblivion by a few members there towards that midpoint. And goes back in. He might not be out of the woods just yet, to be perfectly honest with you, as he is still very, very low here, trying to help on out, line of sighting slightly. Trap yeah. goes down, though, by uh, Frey to try and get this point under wraps. Oh, but Rom's moving out, actually. I'm, I'm s oh, no, he actually he's coming back up, maybe realizing that he needs to still stick in that fight to make sure they're able to carry it further, because Frostball is still under a lot of pressure here. He's only got, he's only got Lightning Flash to move himself out. I mean... With the focus, with the dagger focus, he's got a little bit more, so maybe a little bit more sustainability in there, but he's still doing such a great job with the staff at the moment. It's not looking too bad. If Sen gets away, very low. So does Frostball, though. He's still very, very low. I don't think he's going to be able to get out of this one, though. It's going to be difficult for him to get away. Heals up, though. Manages to get himself away with that wash the pain <laughs> away, and somehow still keeps on going. Protection. The protection from oh. that overload just brings him back in straight away, and he's going to be fine for a little bit Beautiful. of time here. His damage is reduced significantly. Yeah, we mentioned it before. I mean, the overload with Stoneheart as well, when you're going down that uh, line of trades, is so powerful. And once again gets himself away. Although, actually, we're seeing Frey well on pursuit, predicting the movement of Frostball this time. Uh, but still, not going down. No, he's been very, very powerful. He's supporting his, his buddies as well. We are going to see the longbow as well coming out from Frey. It's really, it's Frey isn't it? Yeah, it was Frey. It's just, I actually thought it wasn't from him because I did see the Dragon Knight just starting to move out. Tage does try and pick him out as he tries to disengage from this point. Potential decap here as well. Tage does evade that trap and gets out of it in the end just shooing him away, really. I mean, looking at the compositions once again, we're seeing that Hellseth has that similar thing. Oh, Rom has gone down during all of this whilst I ramble on. But the fights are <laughs> more spread out during this game. And it's yeah. not as easy here for TCG to gain traction with their composition, with this Bunker Mesmer thing, uh, because the fights are so spread out. No, I mean, he's biding time now. He's picking up that mansion point. He's playing that good. bunker build, and that's good for them now. But unfortunately, because of that, that lack of support, maybe they're missing over on the midpoint. World Up Frey you is going to go down, Red and they're in no situation where they're just really trying to focus on three, two caps. And Ooh. they pick up the sides now. And this actually could be a nice move, like bunkering down on the side nodes while well, there's more fighting like for Orange that. Logo Blue towards the middle area, and they try and go for a cap on one of the sides. But the thing is, it's going to be slow going for them to actually support each other now. Kaz is taken down by Sinjaneer there. Sin uh, Kaz didn't even try it too much to actually get himself out of that sticky situation. Likewise, he had a few members there to try and help him out, but I think they realized overall that they weren't going to be able to get him up, and that they just want to uh, turn their attention elsewhere and try and be as efficient as possible, considering they know someone's going to go down. So over towards the mansion at the moment, Lord Asura is trying to hold his own as well against this, with Helseth also coming in, throwing down those wells Whoa. here with the Well of Recall, as well as Gravity Well, to try and help out the situation. Yeah. Chaos Storm, they're getting the alacrity. This is what it's good about in, this in these team fights. Getting yeah. their cooldowns back quicker so that in the end they can out DPS them in the turn because they're getting their cooldowns back. And they're being drawn inside. over here. A lot of people are being yeah. drawn over here once again. We're seeing Frostball taking some damage towards ah. Clock Tower, which is being won by TCG. If ever all of this big fight stays on Mansion, this is fantastic for TCG. Exactly, they've driven exactly what happened in the first game. Yes. They controlled it. They've controlled it by 
Frostball went to mid to try and get the DK to hold the node. But TCG actually, they might actually pick up the free cap. Look, they're moving everyone over into midpoint. Uh -oh. They need to be careful that they don't lose this fight. Oh, the loop around from 50 cent. But at the same time, Lotusaur is there to greet him. So that's not going to be the easiest of fights at all. While now everything is on Clock Tower, they need to separate someone off to try and go over to go. Uh, Windmill. Plus, plus one now for Karzez over towards it. This is perfect because they can kill... They can kill 50 Cent pretty pretty quickly here, actually. Yeah. And the red team, they're being very cautious. Look, you can see nice. it on the map. Let's quickly have a look. And you can see they're just backing off now. TCG. Holding the mid node contested. They have come back by about 80 to 90 points in this game. And Orange Logo have not gained for a significant amount of time. Yeah. They had the mid cap. They went all in to Mansion. And they lost mid. And now they're going to actually lose Frostball as well. And they've lost 50 Cent. Everything changed when TCG decided to move to the side points. Yeah, Hell South goes down though, so that's a, a little bit of a pickup, a little bit of a boon here for Orange Logo, but they still need to scramble. I mean, uh, they've got Frostball back up towards the mid on the clock tower. If they can push away Frey finally, maybe they can actually do something at this location. Uh, and considering that it's only Frey on this point, he should be able to cap it. Frey though is going to actually tr just jump that on. Back up. That's, that's gutsy. He's got his trap back up, gets his heal as well as, no, sorry, his heels are going to be back up in about 10 seconds, but I don't think he's going to be able to get back up onto mid in time. Uh, but he does get the pull back up indeed, so good job in the end from Frey, who's picking his moments and does Ooh. keep the point contested. Plus one over towards the mansion here. Lord of is having a hard time. Tej with Temporal Rift, as well as this ah, Physio is going to be able to push him away, so very, very good stuff here. Should be able to get the mansion for themselves. Asura does not want to give up his body, so in the end, him rotating around towards Clock Tower to try and help that out means that maybe they can just kind of take that over the fact that the mansion, they've still ah, got a point look, cushion. As soon as they move into free caps, they're starting to come back into the game. Yeah. But the problem is now they're, they're in a situation where they might have been in 1v2s Oof. for a bit too long. So now the uh, team of TCG are able to take it ahead and actually take advantage of that themselves as well. Now they can plus up elsewhere, potentially and snowball the map back into their favor if they can get these kills. I think 50 Cent has to be very, very careful towards that midpoint there, uh, considering what is he going to be going up against. And he's going to get exploded if he's not careful. So he's going to enter his Reaper Shroud knowing that he could get exploded during all of that. Five minutes left of the game as well. As Sintronair, yeah, coming back into the windmill. As well as Drazin now is actually on the side, trying to keep Sintronair at bay. Can actually do a lot. We've actually seen the Revenants having a lot of trouble against the engineers, um, the more tanky Celestial engineers, because they can take and sustain so well. And they're able to take a lot of what cut, what the Revenant's dishing out. And at the moment, you know, Slick Shoes really powerful and strong as well as that disengage potential from the Sneak Gyro. But now he really is starting to feel the pain here. And uh, Kazez is with his focus onto Rom. Actually, you might see Rom go down, but he disengages. No one chases. Oh no, Dreza does potentially go for it here. Sneak really goes down. Good job from the plus up as well. Yeah. I, I just I over towards the match and I just caught Tej trapped in D Dragon's Maw in no man's land. He was just out <laughs> in the middle of nowhere for a little while there uh, whilst Frey is doing what he can over towards the mansion. But it's still, you know, one versus one. It's going to be difficult for both of them to really kind of finish off that fight. No caps at the moment, but still we're seeing here that TCG are in a commanding lead and they've just taken the wa uh, windmill oh. here. Go over towards that clock yeah. tower. Try and grab that away. And they bring it, what are they bringing? They're bringing the team fight. Yep. Well, to a degree, they're bringing a 3v3 here at the moment. Uh, no, it's 3v4 four even, I would say. Oh, no, Hellseth rotating. He's going over to try and help Frey and just stall that yeah, out. Draw oh, drops down a lot of wells here oh. to try and get Frey up. But a great knockback. Yeah, really good elite knockback there from Sinjunir to make sure that Frey's off point, forcing Hellseth to make the decision, do I go for the res? But he doesn't want to go for that versus no. Tage, who's playing Condi, and then another Revenant. He's going to die in time here. I but mean, he's doing a good job at surviving. What once Frey gets knocked off the point, does Hellseth really want to dedicate so much time to picking up his te uh, teammate no. when he can try and deny the point? Yeah, it's look, so important. two Revenants as well. He's keeping the revs out of the action yeah. at the moment, and they are still 50 points ahead. The game is so go. slow. We've only got under three minutes left in this matchup, and I don't know whether or not Orange Logo are going to be able to come back, mm. but if they just need a cap. It was a nice attempt by Hellseth. I think he knew he was always going to go down in the end. Uh, again, you know, to that slow effect back. of this game, just slow it down. Keep it slow. You are ahead in points at the moment. They've got themselves Ooh. mansion, but there's no reason that Windmill can kind of get taken. Oh. 
Actually, Whoa. yeah, the two cap causes a problem. A big problem. Like, everything was on Mansion there at the moment They're as well. And that, that is probably going to be the pinnacle changing point of this game for Orange Logo if Did they can hold that? the caps. Red but we are going to see point. Windmill yeah. coming out as well. We've only got a 30-point difference in score. This can be won at the moment by Orange Logo. They can be, sorry. Um, but yeah, by Orange Logo, Logo, they're coming back into the game. They've got enough points and time left on the game. We've not seen the Treb hit mid once. I'm uh -oh. not sure. Maybe teams may be finding that might be useful in the future. Even just to pop a shot in here. It's going to be a mid-team fight again here if they're not careful. Uh, I mean, at the same time, Sintronir is keeping an eye on Hellseth, so at least yeah, he's away really. from this fight currently. Even if they did team fight towards the middle, they wouldn't have the support of those welds, which is very, very important here towards this mid-team fight. On the 50 cent here, That's back true. in towards that Reaper Shroud. Just a bit. The fight isn't even going on on the node. It's just all over the place. This is going to come to a very... This is still very slow, and we need to see Long a very steel. impactful move. But look, if Frey goes down here, this could be game over, but he gets back up, and now they're going to rush towards that mansion node. We've got to watch this 1v1 between Asura and Rom on the other side because he can decap. And if this. they lose that node, they're going to lose the game for sure. But Asura is really good. He knows where to hang out. He knows where to be. But Orange Logo grabbing the recaps on this point. We have one minute left in the game. Only one point oh. now. And the decap. And this is where it's all being lost for TCG. The yeah. moment Lord Asura has a big difficulty over on this node, especially against the Ranger, and he can decap very well. But now we are going to see TCG rushing the map, but look who gets back on point. It's going to be Tage. He's going to rescue everything, and he's going to be in a 1v2 situation. They need to think about what they're going to do here. They need the mid dig cap potentially as well, but do they need to plus up on this side node? There's only... It's only 16, 17 points, but the close. lead is extended. They need to plus one up here over on the windmill. Look! Rom's been left so far in this 1v1. He only needs one more tick before the decap comes out. It's too much. It's way too much here. Lord of Sura, if he gets knocked off, no, for any the reason. Node. If they get, if they get <laughs> pines down onto Lord of Sura, he might end up going down. He's so close to death here. If he goes down, that is it. I mean, there's only 13 seconds left it's anyway. Game. It looks like that is game here, and it looks like Orange Logo will make the recovery oh. in this best of three, and they will be our champions. What? A series we have seen out from these two teams. Wow, amazing stuff. Really, I mean, I felt like, and it was, it was all won and lost almost. I mean, no, we, I know we had all the action coming out over on the mansion, but that windmill cap was essential to keeping them in that game because they would have had the caps equal and kills might have even just tipped yeah. over for TCG. And because they didn't plus one up on that node, mm, you know, as they moved out from the mansion, they were moving into a point where they couldn't get the decap. It was a slow paced last game, but I can completely see the adaptation from game one to game three. Yeah, yeah. Not as, I don't think that power, uh, that build from Hellseth is as powerful on Battle of Kylo, for yeah. sure, compared to Forest, but still, it was, you could see the adaptation from Orange Logo. They weren't willing to get suckered into those bigger team fights. No, they made good decisions, better yeah. decisions. And, and when they were in those big team fights, say on Clock Tower, for example, they were splitting one person off at least to try and get those decaps. So it was really, really cool to see that kind of play. And uh, they have been crowned our champions here this month. So congratulations to Orange Logo. Good stuff. Stonking stuff. And that's that's the end of the Go For Cup. That's dun, the end dun, of the go dun. for Guild Wars 2 Cup, and it has been a year's ish worth of cups. It has been a year ish worth of cups. Whoa. And you've come here every single month I have. at 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I, <have>. <laughs> <laughs> I really have. <laughs> it's, been, it's been the journey. It's been quite it the journey. It's been, a, it's been an interesting one. It's been a good one. Yes, it has. Very good but one. where one journey ends, another <laughs> begins, you it have does. Pro League. Coming up, of course, yes. which has got a lot of money on the line. I think it's like four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, over the seasons that we have between the regions as well, there's a lot of cash up for grabs. That and is a lot of money. We're deciding this next Monday, not the whole month, not all for four hundred grand. No. <laughs> all next Monday, four hundred. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll just put it on red. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely fine. But um, next Monday is going to be where we can see the final four teams that will be qualifying for the Pro League. So that's going to be casted from our ESL UK studios yes. in uh, the EU, of course. 
than you. Sadly, um, I won't get much opportunity to do that with you. But no, uh, yes, I'm pretty sad about this. Maybe down the line I'll be able to get more opportunities. I to think do some we'll stuff. we will see Kalaris again. Maybe we will see Kalaris. Again. If you want to see me, you want to see me. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I'm pretty sure. Nobody do. tweets me like. Actually, no, we don't. <laughs> we don't care. Sorry. Like, oh but okay. no, it's been it's been <laughs> a great ride over the last year. For yes. you know, for sure, we've had the mix of the Go Fours, we've had the mix of you know WTS as well. So. It's a big change for for everyone in Guild Wars 2, and I'm sure, you know. And those changes will continue with the meta how it is right now. Everybody looking at these builds, yeah, okay, they've been fantastic for mm. us this week, but who okay. knows what's going to come next week. So exactly. it's uh, very, very interesting to see the development of this game as it goes along. I'm, l I'm loving it at the moment. And, you know, I just need to make sure I remember to say the times, because 6 p.m. GMT on Monday, yep. this channel is when we're going to see the EU qualifiers being taken place. We're going to find out the last four teams. NA is going to be 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on this channel. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying those times for those regions specifically because I think that helps quite a lot. Yes, um, And, yeah, so make sure you tune in. Check out the action. Obviously, we've got um, Hurix and also Storm later with the NA Cup as well. Um, in, e in EU, that's about 1 a.m. Uh, CET depending on where you are, obviously GMT 12 a.m. But it's been awesome. Yes. I'd like to say thank you very much personally as well. Thank you, as man. As well as from the from the audience and the viewers at home as well. Like I said, I don't think we've seen the last of No, probably not. This. I suspect not. Uh, I would like to be around. It's a lot of fun. And I can't wait to actually go home and play Revenant and just kill everybody. Actually, when I say <laughs> kill everybody, I mean probably not because I'm really bad at this game. But I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm learning. I'm doing okay. Yeah, Admittedly, I've got a lot of work to do across my yes. repertoire of games. So, yeah, I mean, again, I just came back from BlizzCon <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. But for this, hey, it was a lot of fun. We did good today. Today was a good cast. I'm happy with it. We did a good job. <laughs> we, we had good viewers. Twitch chat seems to appreciate. So there you go. <laughs> what, your revenant Bless skills? Or your no, hashtag keep Kyle Aris. Bless oh. them. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. We are community. Best, best MMO Very slash nice game people. community we have. Yeah. So... This has been a long outro. Uh, it has. We're going to. We are wrapping it. this up. <laughs> we're, we're shush you. <laughs> All right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for the Go for Guild Wars Two monthly final. Make sure if you want to play for Pro League to sign up before Friday, uh, as all of that will be going down on Monday, of course, to find out the last four teams that are going to be qualifying on through to Pro League. For now, though, that does it for us. Any last words before we sign off? Keep it short. <laughs> See you in the mists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. We shall see you next time for Guild Wars 2.